Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, Cooking with Katrina. If you are new here, hello, welcome. And if you're not, hello, welcome back. Today on the menu is pie day. I'm gonna show you two different pie recipes that I'm making for my family. Let's get started. Okay, starting with the first one is gonna be a cherry cream cheese pie. I have always made this recipe because it is so easy when you don't feel like waiting for like eight hours for a cheesecake, you can make this short no-bake cheesecake. So the ingredients for this pie is of course whatever your favorite pie crust. You can make it homemade or you can buy it already prepared at the store like I did. I bought the shortbread. That's the one that I wanted to try today. I've tried it before also and it's really, really good. Um, one eight ounce um, package of cream cheese softened, really softened. So you can, if it's you're making this and you have not taken your cream cheese out early enough, you can always just throw it in defrost or just put it in the microwave for five to seven um, minutes, no, not minutes, seconds until it's nice and soft and creamy. I've got a cup of heavy cream, a teaspoon of vanilla, one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, and cherry pie filling. And with this dessert, of course, you can use whatever pie filling that you and your family like. Let's get started. Yeah, he's gonna help too. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna just cream my cream cheese until it's nice and smooth. You have to cream this before because you do not want lumps in your pie. Now I'm going to add the sweetened condensed milk. And if you want to double this recipe to make more than one pie, you just double everything. Neatly. The only thing about this pie that I don't like is it's messy. Other than that, it's delicious. I'm gonna add my vanilla. And then I'm just gonna bring this together really nice and smooth as well. Okay, and I'm gonna add my cup of heavy whipping cream. And this is gonna be the longest process. It's gonna be about five minutes because you want it to almost make whipped cream.
Okay, guys, so ignore all of the loud noise if you hear everybody's in here right now. Um, looking out the window because it's snowing. Yes, beautiful, beautiful view. Okay, so the second pie dish, of course, on this snowy Friday is chicken pot pie. Super easy chicken pot pie. So I've already cut up seven medium size boneless skinless breast. I have a stick of butter and I have a humongous bowl of frozen mixed vegetables. Um, I actually did not want to cut up potatoes, so in the freezer section in every grocery store, they sell um, diced potatoes, which everybody knows that anyway. Hash brown or breakfast potatoes, whatever. You can get it from the freezer section or the cold section. I know for sure. Um, and all I'm going to do right now is throw the chicken breast into the Instapot and cook for 20 minutes in a cup of homemade chicken um, stock. And all that is is the chicken breast, a stick of butter. You could throw vegetables in there, but there's no need because we are um, having vegetables in the chicken pot pie. A stick of butter, a cup of water, and three tablespoons of chicken bouillon and 20 minutes and the chicken is ready, okay? So this is how it looks. Right here, the stick of butter and our chicken bouillon in there. And like I said, 20 minutes. And we'll start putting everything together. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and cook our vegetables. I'm gonna saute these up. Okay, so the chicken and the vegetables are completely cooked. You see how tender the chicken is, just falling apart. That's what you want. So flavorful. So I'm just gonna set this to the side. I have that yummy buttery broth that I'm gonna use to add thickening to it for our sauce because you gotta have a creamy pot pie. And then I have four already made store-bought pie crust. You can make the homemade one if you want to, or you can use a different crust, whatever floats your boat, whatever works for you. So I'm just gonna sit these. I had them out for about 15 minutes because I want them to come up to room temperature, and we're gonna start on the sauce. Okay, so right here I have a stick of unsalted butter that I'm melting right now. And I just want that to melt completely. And we're gonna build it by making us a roux. And how to make a roux? It's just some flour, a whisk. Cameron. Okay. Sorry, y'all, I'm dropping stuff. Camera's not wanting to stay put. Okay, so this is, wait, be quiet. Okay, so while this is melting up really nice, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my flour. This is AP flour, I'm gonna do about a half a cup. And you want to cook the flour. Just gonna cook it up and put out all that rawness. So good. I'm going to actually turn it down just a little bit on medium high heat because I don't want the flour to burn and I don't want this to cook too fast. Okay? So, from this point on right now, I'm going to add some of the broth.
that was right there was two and a half cups of the broth. You can add chicken stock if you want to. You see it's starting to thicken up, so the thicker it gets, just thin it down just a little bit more with the broth. This is looking good. It'll be like a mashed potato texture. Just gonna keep adding the broth. gonna be like chicken gravy. That's what it's gonna look like. And then we're not done from this point. We still have one more thing to, to add once we've whisked it in nice. Everything nicely. Good, looking good. Get well incorporated. We'll turn it down some more because it's starting to bubble. Okay, now I'm gonna add some heavy cream. And that's a half a cup of heavy cream. If you don't have heavy cream, you can use half and half, or you can use evaporated milk. You just want something that's kind of rich. Or just use milk. But you want the creaminess of it. Looks so good. I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning. Get bit probably about a tablespoon. I'm gonna add some sage, just a little bit. Sage is very potent, so don't add too much. And some fresh ground black pepper. And you don't need to add any salt because we have salt from the broth already. That looks so good. And just let it simmer for a few minutes. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Got a taste tester right now. That's good, isn't it? Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is pour this into our bowl. It'll be for one for now and one for another day. So all I'm gonna do is I like a nice crust. Sorry, 
all y'all is loud. It just all depends on you, what you like. I'm gonna spray my pan. Put a little bit of vegetable oil, not too much because you don't want it to lose it, just so the crust. Put it on there. This is a big humongous bowl. So I'm adding half now, half later. This is a one pot dish, that's what I like about it too. You can serve it with a salad or fruit, or you can serve it like how I'm serving it tonight, just a one pot dish. You got your meat, vegetables. It's so good. Okay. So this is going to go in a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and get my crust on top and put it in there. These are about to go in a 375 degree oven for about 30 to 35, 40 minutes until completely done, brown crust cooked all the way and bubbly and golden. See you back shortly. Okay, you guys, so this is it. One for now and one for later. It took 45 minutes. So just to be exact on the time, if you want your crust a little bit browner or lighter, of course you can do that. But this is dinner. I'm getting ready to serve it up. We'll be eating. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next video. Bye. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you try these recipes. They are so easy and so delicious. And I will see you guys next video. Bye.